Hey guys, it's Noah here, Custom FPV, and today I've got a big announcement because my Whoop Canopy, the Custom FPV Ultralight Mount, is now officially available for public download on Thingiverse. We've open sourced it, that's right. Uh, if you haven't heard of this map before, it is a project that's been a year and a half in the making. I've been making small changes to it. This one right here is V20. Um, so a lot of different changes to make it as durable and lightweight as possible. I've been working with pro whoop racers like AK and T-Dog um, to get, make this the best mount that it could possibly be. It's been for sale at aerialoutlaws.com for quite some time now, and the main reason I decided to go that route in the beginning was so that I could print each one and make sure that it met my standards of quality control. Again, so it's not only as light as possible, but also isn't going to let you down uh, when you're racing with it. Um, but now, I decided I was going to make this video now that you can download it and print it yourself so that you have some direction and you know how to print this for the best results, as well as I'm going to give you some tips on how to mount it successfully um, and maybe some other little things to make your whoop as durable as possible when using this mount. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so we're here in Orca Slicer, which is my preferred slicer, but if you're using Bamboo Studio as well, these tips will also be relevant. I'm printing this mount on a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, but I've also printed uh, with the X1 Carbon, P1S, and the A1 with the same degree of success. And I've even printed this mount on my old Ender 3s, although it did take a little bit more time dialing in the printer. Um, but again, for today's tutorial, I'm just gonna be using uh, this A1 Mini in Orca Slicer. Um, and the print profile I use actually is not my own. Um, it is from a creator named Zaretto on printables. He has this Sane Smart TPU profile, which is much better than uh, any of the ones that I've made over time. When I first designed this mount, I used my own profiles, but recently I switched to his and it is, uh, you know, it's pretty good. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with that and I'll show you guys some of the different changes I made so you can download his profile and make these same changes yourself. Um, and basically, uh, in the quality, I haven't changed too much here. My layer height is 0.2 millimeters, um, and seam position is aligned. For strength, uh, since everything is just one layer, uh, you're not going to really have to worry too much about infill or uh, wall uh, loops or anything like that. Um, and then for my speed, I actually just kind of lower things down roughly uh, 50 millimeters per second from stock. So I went from 200 to 150 on the outer wall, 300 to 250 on the inner wall, although there's really not any inner walls. Um, and then for the travel speed, if you're printing multiple of these, I actually went down from 700 millimeters per second uh, to 600 millimeters per second. For my support settings, um, I am using uh, tree supports here, um, and I'm not using a slim. Um, I'm just using the default here, um, and I'll go ahead and show you that. We're actually going to import one of these right now. Um, the lower the angle that you go, the more support you're going to need because the overhangs are greater. Uh, they do load in like this, and that's because I had the axes, the uh, Z axis and the Y axis, and my CAD software flipped at the time that I uh, made this design. Um, so all you're going to need to do is just go ahead and come up here to auto orient, and obviously the best way to print it is going to be uh, facing down like this. You're not going to be able to print it like on its on the face of the lens or anything like that. This is the best way to do it, mainly for the strength of these back two legs that need to stretch here. So it's going to sit just like that. Um, and the last thing I do want to say before we slice this thing is uh, that you're going to make sure that you don't have a brim. There's no need for a brim. Um, and uh, if you do have one, you're just going to have to cut it out and it's going to be annoying. Um, so don't worry about a brim on there. So the last thing I like to do before I get this mount sliced is to go ahead and go into the filament preset um, by clicking this button right here and scrolling down to your flow ratio. Um, again, these are a lot of uh, Zaretto settings, so I don't like to mess with many of them, but this flow ratio essentially is a multiplier uh, that represents how much filament is being extruded um, as you're printing the mount. So the higher this number is, uh, the more filament is extruded, and of course, the lower, the less. Um, that's going to directly impact your weight. So the lowest I've done this and had a successful mount is around 0.9, um, but I typically have it at 0.98 or so, um, and 0.95 if I want it to be a little bit lighter. But what I would recommend doing is going ahead and printing one out, seeing how it is um, at around 0.98, maybe going down to 0.95 and further and further, uh, and seeing kind of how the weight savings uh, impacts you know the durability, um, because there is that fine line in there. Um, but I like to leave it at uh, 0.98. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and slice this plate right here. And of course, before you print it, it's always a good idea to go ahead and take a look at what your supports are gonna do. On these lower uh, angle mounts, you wanna make sure that the back is supported right here, as well as you wanna make sure that underneath the foot area of the mount is also supported. Those are where uh, the overhangs are. And this obviously also generated some supports uh, for this corner of the PCB holder. Um, but you know, I don't know if that's really going to make a big difference or not. Um, I will say that if you are printing anywhere between a 40 and a 50 degree mount, you probably don't really even need supports at all. Um, but they can never hurt even if they don't really do too much. So just see uh, what the slice gives you. And of course, trial and error will be your friend um, to help you uh, find the best result that works for you and works for the filament that you're using. All right, so coming into the print farm here, uh, I am printing with this A1 Mini right here, and I've got my filament loaded. The filament I'm using for this project is a Sane Smart uh, Liquid Luster Gray, um, and Sane Smart TPU has been my go-to. All the mounts that I printed so far have been uh, in Sane Smart, and it's been excellent. I printed also in black and white, and I know that the weight can slightly vary as well as how it prints can slightly vary based on the color dye and the other materials that uh, are different, again, just to get the different color results. Uh, so it's not gonna make a huge difference, but it is something worth considering. I believe clear might be the lightest because there's less additives in it. I'm not totally sure, don't take my word for that, um, but that's just my limited knowledge on this stuff. And I print straight out of this Sunlu dryer right here, and I like to dry it uh, for at least two hours beforehand if I can spare. That's how I've noticed the best results. Um, but you know, whatever you got with you, um, I'm sure it will work just fine or you'll figure it out along the way. I print straight out of here in a PTFE tube into the extruder here. Uh, if you have an AMS system, don't use the AMS of course. Um, that goes without saying. Um, and if you're not using a Bamboo Lab machine, uh, make sure that uh, the printer is well calibrated and make sure that uh, and any belts that you might have access to. I know like on a Creality Ender 3 or similar machine, you might be able to tighten up belts or anything like that. Um, a lot of the tuning when it comes to uh, 3D printers is just like drones where you wanna make sure that the hardware uh, is nice and secure before worrying about the software. Okay, so now that the canopy is printed, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare it to put on the quad. And one thing to note here is that when these do break, they like to break right up here at the front screw hole. And typically it's because these first few layers at the bottom here separate. Um, they weaken over time with every impact and they separate. So I'm actually gonna strengthen this uh, with a little tip here. I like to go ahead and heat up a soldering iron to about 300 degrees, not too hot. And then I just like to go ahead and lightly rub it right across each side, just like that, till it's nice and smooth, as you can see. We're melting those layers together, and then just a little bit over the top. I've been doing this to the ones that uh, I've been selling to Isaac for quite some time now, by hand, and this significantly improves uh, the durability of the mount. Again, just because you're melting those first few layers that tend to break together. Um, obviously, you don't wanna do this too much so that it deforms and it uh, eats into the material here in the wall because it is just a thin wall, of course. Um, but just a little bit of this and that will help uh, make your mount just a touch more durable. So my next tip for this mount is regarding uh, actually getting the screws through the hole so you can mount it to your frame. Um, and I recommend doing this before you even introduce the frame itself or uh, your camera. So just do this right fresh off the printer after you melt um, the layers down there. And I have very tiny little holes for each of the three holes for mounting. A lot of people ask me why this is, and it's simply because uh, if they're any larger, they tend to stretch, and when they stretch, they can break easier. Um, if you've never used one of these mounts before, uh, essentially you put the front uh, mounting hole in first, and then you're actually gonna need to stretch these two back legs out a little bit, and that puts tension um, between the frame there 
there, and that provides that extra rigidity to prevent any jello and also add durability. Um, but the holes are small, so they don't stretch out over time and cause uh, a durability weakness um, with that. So we will need to go ahead and widen out these holes just a little bit if you're trying to uh, use a Rennie screw with them. So the way I like to do this is first by threading through uh, one of these spiky flight controller screws. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and load that on my screwdriver here. And just pop that in, just like so, just like that. I recommend having a malleable surface below, uh, like this solder mat. Uh, I also like to use a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna show you guys that. Um, and the nice thing with that is that you can actually put some pressure on that. The cardboard's gonna have some give, and it's gonna allow you to kind of drive the screw into the hole. Um, and it's gonna create a little divot in the cardboard so that the screw doesn't like slide around or anything like that while you're trying uh, to mount it in place. So I'm just gonna thread this all the way through just like that, and then we're gonna pull it out. And then I'm gonna to switch to my Rennie screw, which is in between my fingers. You're just gonna to have to trust me. And with that, the way I like to do this is I like to put my finger on the edge of the screwdriver, press down, and then again, I'm pressing down into the cardboard, just like so. You can kind of see it creates that divot, which kind of locks the entire thing in place. Just like that, your Rennie screw is now in place and you can of course mount it to your frame. Um, you may choose to run a metal screw in the front. Again, that's where all the stress is, as I talked about in the last tip. Um, but I have heard of people running uh, Rennie screws with success in the front as well. So that's kind of up to you, but I typically like to play it safe and run metal up front. Okay, so now that we've loaded in our screws, the next step that I like to do is go ahead and insert my camera again before we even bring the whoop in place. So yours will have some wires hanging off of it, of course, but this one I just pulled out of my drawer here. And I like to do this by grabbing it like so, pushing it into place, making sure it's all lined up, and then pushing the back of the circuit board just like that. And a lot of people like to stop right here where the circuit board's kind of in line with the back of the mount. And uh, this is not fully seated in as designed, and it's not gonna provide that protection that we're looking for. Uh, what you wanna do is go ahead and take your thumb right here and hold the front of the mount just like this and firmly push in just like so until the circuit board slides all the way to the front of this little area right in here. And as you can see, that's what it looks like when it's fully seated, the lens is flush with the front um, of the mount right there and you'll be able to see some material right here on the shelf i like to call it um this is actually goes ahead and insulates this back chip right here from the flight controller ideally uh, preventing any damage between any impacts between this and the flight controller but also it helps keep this chip in place so that this doesn't slide around which is a known weakness on the pinch camera once you have that, uh, you may decide to go ahead and use a drop or two of E6000 in the corners right here, um, but sometimes you don't need it, especially if it seats firmly in place like so. All right, then the final step is we're gonna go ahead and drop our camera mount on top of the Whoop. Uh, you may choose to solder up the wires before or after, depending on what flight controller you're using. Um, I'd probably recommend doing it beforehand. Um, but obviously I don't have any wires in this case, so we'll skip that for now. But we're gonna go ahead and solder on the front uh, of the camera mount right here, and then one at a time, we're gonna go ahead and stretch out each leg uh, to the corner. The first one will be fairly easy, maybe not even require any stretching at all. Just like so. And then this one's gonna require a small stretch. What I'd like to do here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this actually, and then this one's gonna require some stretch. I got the end of it here. I'm just gonna stretch it, get the end of the screw in place kind of at an angle. Hopefully you can see that. And then I like to hold it with my thumb, hold it straight and stretched just like that. And tighten it in the rest of the way. And the result here should be a really firm camera mount and there shouldn't be any jello of any kind. And that's how you know you've installed the custom FEV camera mount properly.